Hello, everyone. Welcome to our annual Super Bowl ad review, Tech Bowl 2022. I, Ben Jones Rice, Seattle U's chapter president of the American Market Association, will be your host for this year's event. Now, about this year's review, it's different from most other years. It's all about technology. Alba's professors, Dr. Isaac and Dr. Hong, will be making a deep dive into multiple ads, past and present, as they walk us through what excellent and not so good advertisements look like. Before I pass it over to our expert panelists, I would like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, GeekWire and Seattle University's Albers School of Business and Economics, without whom would have made this review impossible. Now, let us begin the Tech Bowl 2022. Thank you for the introduction, Ben. Uh, and thank you to the entire Seattle U American Marketing Association chapter uh, for inviting us to chat again about Super Bowl ads this year. Uh, even though this is the 10th year that uh, I'll be talking about Super Bowl ads here, this is our very first Tech Bowl. And so we definitely want to thank uh, GeekWire for co-sponsoring this event. And we also want to thank uh, the Director of uh, Marketing and Communications, Alicia Khan at Albers, uh, for organizing this event. Um, so I think, I think I can speak for Jen when I say that we really love uh, doing this event because it's a one time in the year where everyone seems to be really excited about advertising uh, rather than uh, you know, trying to avoid it. And uh, for us, it's just fun to play the role of armchair quarterbacks and kind of think about and dissect and debate uh, all the Super Bowl ads. Um, I also think that it is important to point out that Advertising is an important part of marketing, but marketing isn't just advertising. However, advertising is such a visible part of marketing that it's really just fun uh, to get a chance to uh, go through these ads together. So let's get started. This year, there are more than 20 commercials coming from the tech industry. So we're excited to share how these performed this year as historically tech ads tend to, um, tended to underperform relative to all the other commercials based on this framework called ad plan. Okay, so now we have Professor Isaac to describe what that ad plan framework is. All right, so uh, we, we'd like to encourage the viewers to use uh, this framework called Ad Plan, which was developed by two professors at Kellogg, Tim Hawkins and Derek Rucker, uh, more than 15 years ago. And uh, it uses this acronym. And what I'll do is I'll introduce the framework uh, one uh, word at a time, starting with attention, the A in, uh, the first A in ad plan. And what we'll do is we'll show you uh, a commercial or part of a commercial from prior Super Bowls uh, that'll help kind of illustrate uh, each of these components as we go along. I, I will mention that typically uh, a company may not excel on all six aspects of the ad plan framework, but it is important that they do really well on at least a few of the elements and reasonably well on all six. Uh, so attention, attention is all about breaking through the clutter. Uh, and this is about stopping people in the tracks so that they take notice. This is really important in the Super Bowl, especially in, if there's a Super Bowl party and people are distracted. How do you break through all the noise of the Super Bowl? And so uh, we'll look at, uh, I think, a great example of this going back to 1984 uh, when Apple uh, launched the, uh, the ad called 1984. Today we celebrate the first glorious anniversary of the information flow. So uh, the reason I think that this is probably the best example of attention is this is the ad that really made Super Bowl advertising what it is today. Uh, some consider it the greatest commercial ever made. And I know it may look a little dated now, but keep in mind that this is 38 years old at this point. And at the time it was released, uh, the Apple commercial was like nothing else on TV. At that time, most commercials were focused on showing you product features and attributes, and Apple instead uh, uh, focused more on um, the creative execution and the production value. Uh, their commercial was actually directed by a film director, Ridley Scott, and that's a trend that's continued in the Super Bowls even this year. Uh, Academy Award winner Chloe Zhao uh, directed the Anheuser-Busch ad. So it really started this idea of making the Super Bowl something which would allow people to stop 
what they were doing and watch. And in fact, the Apple ad, even pre-social media, uh, generated about $150 million in earned media due to conversation that happened afterwards and replay on news programs and on talk shows. And so it's really not an exaggeration to say that this is the commercial that made Super Bowl advertising an event. The D in the ad plan framework stands for distinction. And the way you can think about this is, could you substitute out one brand and one logo for some other brand or some other logo without changing the effectiveness of the commercial? If you can do that, the ad's not very distinctive. So if the ad is something that really only you can do and only you can say, uh, uh, then uh, it's an example of a very distinctive commercial. And so you really want to seek this kind of distinction in your uh, advertising. So uh, a great example of this is uh, Google's uh, first Super Bowl commercial from 2010, which we'll watch now. This ad was relatable and it was a sweet story. Um, and so even though it was a technology ad, it really tugged at emotions and, and helped people understand how technology fit into their lives. Uh, but also uh, through this uh, commercial titled Parisian Love, uh, I think Google uh, was able to make their uh, search engine the centerpiece of the ad. So it was very distinctive. No other technology company could have replicated and done the same sort of commercial at the time. And it's interesting because I think nowadays a lot of companies think that they are being distinctive if they use a celebrity in a Super Bowl ad. But that's not distinctive because about 80% of Super Bowl ads have at least one celebrity. So uh, the P in the ad plan framework is about positioning. And this is really important because it's, it, it's how companies share that they have a point of difference from other companies in their industry or in their category. And they are able to communicate in some way what that point of difference is. In other words, why should you buy this product instead of something else that could be an alternative out there? So to look at positioning, we're going to look at two website builder ads that aired in the same Super Bowl in 2015. Uh, the first is for Wix, and the other is for Squarespace, uh, who continues to be an advertiser and advertised this year. Let's take a look at both of those commercials. I don't know what I should do next. Do what everybody else does. Start a business. Build yourself a website. Welcome to T.O.'s Humble Pie. With Wix.com. Let's party! We make it easy to create your own all-pro website. All by yourself. Farve and carve. You did that yourself? Don't look so surprised. Wix.com. It's that easy. Um, so in this case, it looks like Wix got its positioning right. They focused very clearly on the ease of interface as a differentiator uh, between uh, what they were able to offer and what competitors could do. Uh, on the other hand, um, the Squarespace commercial, which featured another celebrity, uh, Jeff Bridges, instead of Brett Favre, um, even with the celebrity, it might have been amusing, but you really had no idea what Squarespace was and what made it different or unique. So the positioning really failed, uh, even if you were amused by the commercial. So next, we're going to talk about uh, L, which stands for linkage. And you can think about linkage as how well does the brand permeate through the entire commercial? Uh, and also, uh, is it going to be clear uh, that this is an ad for brand X as opposed to brand Y. Does that come through throughout the whole commercial? Um, the issue sometimes is, uh, in commercials is uh, that companies want to do late reveals where they show the brand name and the brand late logo in the last five seconds of a commercial. That's a dangerous strategy, especially in the Super Bowl where people are distracted and there's a lot of noise. Uh, so really ads that are successful in the Super Bowl tend to have really tight linkage. You can tell right from the beginning that this is a commercial for brand X and you're not waiting 27 seconds or 57 seconds to find that out.
So we'll look at a great example of linkage from Amazon's uh, commercial from 2020. Baby, coming. Alexa, turn down the thermostat. Okay, turning down thermostat. Ready, huh, here we go. What do you think people did before Alexa? Alessa, turn the temperature down two degrees. Thank you, dear. Alexa, tell me a joke. Jokes. Um. God, do you think I know lies? Look at me. <laughs> Next. News. Get your news here. Alex, what's today's news? Doesn't matter. It's all fake. <laughs> 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 Al, play that song I like. Al, next song. Alexi, tell us something interesting. Okay. The earth is flat and a witch stole his pants. I think Amazon has done a great job with linkage over the past few years that they've advertised in the Super Bowl. You can almost think of this commercial as a product demonstration. Uh, it features celebrities uh, and it shows how they are actually using the product in their life. And it's clear from the first few seconds that this is an Amazon Alexa uh, commercial. Uh, and I think that is a great example of linkage. And we can contrast that with the Squarespace example that uh, we looked at a few moments ago, uh, where there is no linkage at all. You can't really connect uh, the first part of the commercial at all to Squarespace. It's only at the late reveal of the brand that you actually know that the commercial is for Squarespace at all. Next, we're gonna talk about the last day in the framework, which is amplification. And amplification is all about how do we extend the window, right? For brands, they don't wanna spend six and a half million dollars on a 30 second ad. They want to see people thinking about, talking about, sharing the ad later. And that is amplification. But of course, amplification isn't always positive. Uh, there are some uh, commercials that are amplified, but not in a good way. And you might see lots of negative sentiment uh, on social media afterwards. So the question is, are there elements of the commercial that is, are gonna lead to positive or negative amplification? So a great example of amplification comes from the Reddit commercial in last year's Super Bowl. Um, if you remember, uh, Reddit took out a five second ad. So first of all, they pay less than the 30 second uh, ad because it was just five seconds. And um, it was actually something that you couldn't read in that five seconds. And so what happened? People were uh, sharing it later on social media uh, in order so that they could actually read what Reddit had communicated in that ad. Um, so it stood out, it was distinctive because it was only five seconds as opposed to being 30 or 60 or 90 seconds. Uh, but it also had a lot of positive amplification because people wanted to know what it said and they wanted to share that with others. So that's a great example of positive uh, amplification. An example of negative amplification is the Mint Mobile commercial from a few years back. And uh, the problem with this ad is it evoked negative emotions such as disgust with this chunky milk uh, in their commercial. And this was something that people were thinking about and talking about afterwards, but unfortunately not in a good way. And usually these kinds of negative emotions are things you want to avoid at a festive event like uh, the Super Bowl, uh, and it can often lead to negative amplification. Last but not least is net equity. And so the idea here is that it's not just one commercial or a set of commercials that you're running in this year's Super Bowl, uh, but this might be something that you're doing year on year and maybe not just in the Super Bowl, but in other outlets. So how does what you're doing in this year's Super Bowl connect with everything else you've done uh, in the past? And uh, you know, companies that do this well uh, you're able to see from the first few seconds that this is a BMW commercial, um, uh, for example, uh, because they are leveraging and using some signals and cues that they've built up over time from some of their other advertising, be it uh, music or some of the production value, etc. A great example of this in the technology space is uh, Microsoft, and this is one of their first uh, Super Bowl ads, uh, and, and we'll take a look at it here. What is technology? What can it do? 
when I lost my eyesight, I thought that my painting days were over. How far can we go? By using your hands, you can actually control your x-ray. Technology has the power to unite us. Hang on, honey. Hang on. There he is. You see him? I can see him. It inspires us. Technology has taken us places we've only dreamed. Now I can do whatever I want. It gives hope to the hopeless. Can you hear me talking? <laughs> and it has given voice to the voiceless. So uh, this ad is great because it is again about technology, but it has a very uh, emotional message and it is very uplifting. The ad's titled Empowering. And not only that, even though it was the first Super Bowl ad, it linked very closely to many of the Super Bowl ads that Microsoft ran uh, for the last, that, that they have run for the last few years after this one. So you can see that they're trying to not just have one commercial and then do something completely different the next year. They're trying to connect everything to what they're trying to say as a brand. So that's the ad plan framework, and that can be applied to advertising in general and also to Super Bowl advertising. Um, but we believe that there are some special circumstances that you really need to think about closely if you're a tech brand thinking about the Super Bowl. And Jen will talk about that. Thank you. In a minute, we will evaluate tech companies' Super Bowl commercials using the ad plan framework. But in addition to that, we would like to expand our grading criteria by addressing some issues that tech companies share in their advertising campaign. These challenges are associated with targeting, enigma, credibility, and history. So we cleverly named this framework Tech. First, the challenges with regards to targeting and Enigma, they're really driven by the complexity of tech offerings and their features. When we think about Super Bowl advertisement, a lot of them are promoting mass-marketed products like chips, soda, beer, airlines, and the list goes on what they are, what they do, they're super easy to explain. For most, you don't even need much of explanation because people already know the brands and what they offer. But when it comes to tech companies, with the exception of a lot of big tech giants, a lot of them don't have much of exposure to the mass market. Often, these companies are tailoring to specific targets, and a big portion of them are B2B, business-to-business -business customers. So there's already this question as to whom these tech companies are talking to, and to explain what they do in such a short amount of time, that always has been a big challenge. Just think about Squarespace and their first Super Bowl commercial that Professor Isaac shared earlier. Um, you have to really wait till the end that the commercial was about Squarespace. And even when viewers were informed about the company, the question as to what exactly does a website building service does, that still lingered to a lot of viewers, the majority of the mass market. Now, the next issue that tech companies commonly face involves credibility and history. In the dot-com era, Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, uh, the impressions consumers had about tech companies, they were very positive that these tech companies are revolutionary, innovative, technology was there to help their lives. But fast forward to now, the 2020s, the public attitude toward tech companies, especially towards the big tech giants, it has not been as positive. Nowadays, consumers distrust tech companies more than ever. And this low credibility can be attributed to tech companies' history of data breach, misuse of consumer data, and also their contribution to dissemination of misinformation. Now, to address this issue on low credibility, um, some companies like Google they use its uh, Super Bowl commercial as an opportunity to really regain consumers' trust. Now, take a look at Google's Super Bowl commercial in 2020. Hey, 
Hey Google, show me photos of me and Loretta. <laughs> Remember, Loretta hated my mustache. <laughs> Remember, Loretta loved going to Alaska and scallops. Show me photos from our anniversary. Remember, she always snorted when she laughed. Play our favorite movie. this tear-jerking commercial, Google is reminding consumers that they're not this evil tech giant. Instead, the company is there to use technology and customer information to ultimately help consumers and improve their lives. Now that we have gone over the ad plan and also the tech framework, let's move on to the main event and rate this year's Super Bowl commercials from different tech companies. All right, so it's time for the Tech Bowl for 2022. And what we've done is we have pulled out eight commercials that we're going to look at together, and we're going to discuss those. And we've set it up in this tournament format. So we're going to be uh, sharing with you pairs of commercials, and we'll look at those, and then we'll um, engage in a discussion where we'll, we'll, we'll think about which one was better in terms of the ad plan tech framework. And then we'll pick a winner that'll advance to the next round. And when we get through this, we'll see who ends up as our champion. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start uh, with uh, two heavyweights, uh, Google and Meta, uh, and we're gonna share uh, their commercials from the big game. People with darker complexions have always struggled with having good lighting. Every single yearbook photo of mine has been terribly shot since I was a kid. I always show up as too dark or shiny. Cause if you love me, you love all of me. Everything the light touches. Oh, baby, give me light touches. Okay, so two commercials from two big companies. Matt, what did you think about Google's this year's Super Bowl ad? So I, I think uh, one thing it did really well was in terms of linkage, right? Right from the beginning, um, they introduced uh, a problem that the Google Pixel could solve, uh, and then that became front and center throughout the rest of the commercial. So I think uh, linkage was really strong for the, uh, the Google commercial. I think also uh, clearly it, it links to inclusion and some of the things that companies in general are focused on around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, but it did so in a way that seemed very authentic, right? Their solution was very much linked to uh, the product offering. And that's important in this day and age because consumers can see 
through inauthenticity in terms of uh, uh, these kinds of practices when it seems that it's virtue signaling or something that's not really core to the business. And in this case, it seems fairly core given uh, the, the product that was introduced. So I think all in all, pretty positive for, for Google. And what do you think about Meta? Well, like the name suggests, Meta was meh for me. Um, it did have the application aspect, which is probably the application that the Meta company was looking for. A lot of people talked about the ad afterwards, how it was depicting the reality as a depressing reality, and this metaverse suddenly made the reality better. I guess I can see their effort in trying to curb that depressing aspect, the negative emotion that it's eliciting with animated Chuck E. Cheese character and the dog and all the other animals, but still it missed the mark on both the amplific amplification because of the ne negative amplification, but also I would say in terms of positioning as well. When you think about metaverse and what metaverse is and what meta provides, they have a clear positioning point of difference of offering this device where people can engage with others in this new metaverse. But because other commercials that are not related to tech, like hard seltzer, they were also using this metaverse-esque ambiance and setting in their commercials, that positioning with in the meta advertisement really, really lacked. Yeah, I think I agree. I think um, these, these kinds of commercials that evoke some negative emotions, and especially uh, if it makes you feel worse about your current reality, that's probably not a good good place to be in the Super Bowl. So I guess um, based on all that, it looks like Google has advanced to the next round in, in, in that one. Uh, let's, let's move on and look at our next pair, which is Coinbase and FTX. So let's take a look. I don't think so. This is a miss. Brother Dave is behold! It's a fork! I got dead forks right here, baby! <laughs> a toilet? We're not animals! <laughs> we go outside like humans! Hancock! No king! The people shall have the right to vote! Even the stupid ones? Yes! Ah! Edison, can I be honest with you? It stinks. Nobody's gone to the moon, ever! Why not? It's far, it's too far, it's far! Let me die, wow. Total Bully Music, this. Bakaka! Denige! Fatalika, eat the more so! Fatalika! Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Eh, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never! So, of course, uh, we just showed you a, a small snippet of the Coinbase commercial because it was 60 seconds of the code bouncing around and we didn't think you needed to see all of that to get the point. Uh, but uh, I guess, Jen, what do you think? Out of these two, clearly they're very different approaches. Uh, which, one, which one stood out to you? Definitely Coinbase for me. So some criticize Coinbase having air that bouncing QR code on the screen for 60 seconds. That seemed a little bit too long. But for me, it took me about 10 seconds to figure out that's a, that was a QR code. And then took me another 20 seconds to stand up and then move on to the TV screen and actually scan the QR code. And that's exactly what Coinbase was going for. Um, not only they wanted to increase the awareness of the company, but they also wanted to translate that awareness to the action to make people sign up for their service, and which they also incentivize, I think, is a great idea. So if you sign up, they it said they will give you $15 in Bitcoin. So it's a pretty clever strategy, which I hope to see in FTX's commercials as well, because they were informing that they were going to do this Bitcoin giveaway. They were creating this pre-buzz, but that wasn't too much mentioned in their actual Super Bowl commercial. Yeah, I think that was a miss because, um, you know, most of these commercials for the Super Bowl nowadays, they release teasers in advance. And I think the FTX teaser was all about this contest that they were going to run where you could win uh, Bitcoin, which 
uh, makes a lot of sense uh, for, for the type of promotion you might, you might want to do if you're trying to make something that is niche more mainstream. So it, it seemed like a great idea. But unfortunately, even though their commercial was pretty funny, um, they didn't really focus in on that competition piece. So it wasn't quite, uh, quite as captivating. So I, I think I'm with you. It looks like the distinction of Coinbase really made it stand out among, this, among these two. And definitely amplification because it was the most tweeted advertisement after the Super Bowl. So we get this amplification. And when you also think about the cost, FTX had a celebrity in it. And also the other cryptocurrency uh, company, Crypto.com, has LeBron James in it. Here we only had a QR code, which probably didn't cost them a lot. So when you think about a company getting bang for their buck. It's definitely the Coinbase who wins, I think, this round. Okay, so Coinbase is through to the semifinals. Uh, let's uh, continue on and look at two very different companies. We've got Amazon. We're going to focus just on its Alexa commercial because they had several other commercials, including for Prime Video in the Super Bowl. But we're just going to look at their Alexa commercial. And we're going to compare it against uh, uh, Monday.com, which is a, a, a small uh, startup. Hey, babe, check this out. Alexa, it's game day. Streaming football on Prime Video. Closing blinds. Chilling rosé. Rosé? Well, it's an afternoon game. Mm. It's like she can read, read your, your mind. mind. Read your mind. I love that we get to sleep mm. in. Ordering fresh mint mouthwash. Extra strength. I'm thinking I shouldn't get a spray tan, you know? Because it's on Wednesday. Activating blender. Funeral's on Monday. Can't you see the treasure all along? It was you. Love the eye patch. It's... When does the show open? March 8th. Setting reminder to fake your own death on March 8th. Not uh. What the f When you have to do those love scenes with hot guys, is that fun or is that like the worst? It's the worst. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Scarlet, this bread is delicious. Oh, Did you make it? Yes, uh, it's from my Gammy's recipe. Announcement. Gammy is short for she bought it at Whole Foods. Announcement. Colin left the oysters in the car for five hours. It's probably better Alexa can't read your mind. Bad idea. Watch the game. Let's do great things. Wonderful things. Let's work in new ways right here, right with our own tools, our own rules. So what we do isn't limited by, well, that's just how it's been done. With Monday.com Work OS, we can work without limits and make everything possible so we can take on anything. Amazon versus Monday.com. What did, you, what did you think, John? Uh, I can talk about Monday.com first. Um, for me, I had to go back to YouTube to see what Monday.com's commercials was because it was too forgettable. Um, I think it has a lot of problems that we talked about in our tech framework. It's a B2B company, uh, according to their website. It's a cloud-based um, platform where people can work where it helps people can work from home. You don't have to go into the physical office. All of things are shared on this cloud platform. But to get that feature told in such a short amount of time, I think they really missed on that mark because they were a little bit vague about what they were doing. Working without limits doesn't really say, oh, here, you can comfortably work from home. So I think I. I think they missed the mark on that dimension. And it also lacked the humor aspect of it. It definitely stand, It definitely didn't stand out as much as other commercials that were celebrity studded, so. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I, I was confused. Uh, at the end of that commercial, 
Uh, I had no idea what what really Monday.com was. Yeah, I th so Amazon, I think, has been strong in past years, and it continues to be strong. I think a couple of things they did well uh, were building on their net equity. It was very clear that this was in many ways a continuation of what they've done the last couple of years, uh, looking at how Alexa uh, impacts uh, everyday people's lives, although in this case, the everyday people were actually celebrities, uh, but, but uh, celebrities that people like and wanted to learn more about. And so I think it worked on that level. And then, of course, uh, fantastic linkage, as in all of their Alexa commercials, uh, where you can really see how the product is front and center and how it, it, it is. You're never going to forget that it was an Alexa commercial. So I think for all those reasons, Amazon um, definitely wins again. And let's not forget, humor is important in these commercials. And it was funny, I think, um, you know, uh, I, uh, the people I was with uh, definitely laughed, stopped and laughed at uh, the Amazon commercial during the Super Bowl. So uh, I think Amazon wins that round. Uh, next, take a look at Uber Eats uh, versus Salesforce uh, and see how these two commercials compared. Let's take a look. Wait, if it was delivered with Uber Eats, does that mean I can eat it? It says eat. It's a diaper. Looks oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. bad. Mmm. Oh, no. oh, no. This candle tastes funny. Mm -mm, I'm, I'm gonna eat it. Not bad, but funny. And thanks to Uber Eats, we don't even know what food is anymore. Our <coughs> decision <is> food. <laughs> We can't eat most of this. Yeah, we can't eat any of this. Why Uber Eats? Why Uber Eats? That bag's a liar. Yeah, I just got so excited. Space, the boundary of human achievement, the new frontier. escape. It's time to engage. It's time to plant more trees. It's time to build more trust. Time to make more space for all of us. So while the others look to the metaverse and Mars, let's stay here and restore ours. Yeah, it's time to blaze our trail. Because the new frontier it ain't rocket science. It's right here. So this is the second year that Uber Eats has, has advertised in the Super Bowl. And I think they learned a few things from last year. So uh, they continued with some things that worked. They had a celebrity mashup again. So if you remember from last year, they featured uh, Cardi B as well as the characters from Wayne's World. And I think that's smart in terms of using celebrities in that these are celebrities that are going to appeal to very different generations, very different segments, very different audiences. So having kind of a mix up of very different celebrities is a good ploy. And I think they continued that in their commercial this year. So that was definitely a win. Um, and even though their commercial last year was pretty funny, um, I think the feedback they, they might have received and how I definitely felt about last year's commercial was it very much focused on eat local to, to their detriment. You might not have even remembered it was an Uber Eats commercial, especially since DoorDash also advertised last year. So I think what they did this year, which was really nice, is they made sure you weren't going to forget that it was about Uber Eats, right? The whole commercial was about people eating things that they maybe shouldn't be eating, uh, and so it was very much tied to uh, the brand name. So really strong linkage uh, this year, which they didn't have last year. So overall, uh, I, I was pretty impressed by Uber Eats uh, this, this time around. I think they learned from their mistakes from last year and got better. Um, what about Salesforce? Um, Salesforce is another B2B company, so uh, they share the same challenges as Monday.com. While Monday.com tried to explain what they did, 
due to the mass audience, Salesforce didn't even bother. Um, they had Matthew McConaughey in the commercial, which did stand out, but they were too focused on explaining what they are not by taking a stab at and taking a stab at criticizing Meta and their Metaverse or SpaceX with, with their rocket science. But because when in doing so, what they really lacked is explaining what they do and what that new frontier is. And that's the that's what's advertised in their commercial. But when you think about it, what they really lack here is the distinction. So they don't reveal that the commercial was about Salesforce till the end, that it's the company that provides a new frontier of um, living for people. But that can really be applied to any kind of commercials. And it, with it, Matthew McConaughey in it, who was also in the Doritos commercial last year, and he's also known to be the spokesperson of Lincoln car automobile for a long time. So if we were to plug Lincoln in or Doritos in it, those can simply be new frontiers as well. So really missed the mark on distinction. So it sounds like from all of this um, that Uber Eats uh, beats uh, Salesforce this year and gets to uh, our final four. Okay, so we're down to our last four. So let's let's think about Google versus Coinbase. Um, how would you compare those? So in terms of the post buzz after the commercials, I would I mean after the Super Bowl, I was Coinbase wins in that dimension. But when you think about the long-term effect, I don't know how effective Coinbase's advertising was because they did have a lot of high traffic, maybe too much, up to the point that their website and app crashed afterwards. So if they weren't ready for the high volume of attention, I don't think they should have aired it in the first place. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think um, it is a problem if you are a cryptocurrency brand and you know that uh, there are a lot of people that are not sure if they want to uh, start using cryptocurrency. And then if you send them to your website or your app and it crashes, uh, that's not necessarily going to inspire a lot of confidence, right? And so I think that's that's an issue. Um, it, it's, it's one thing to capture attention, which they definitely did through their distinctive uh, advertising, but then you have to follow through. And I think where they failed was with the digital integration. You, you can't have that kind of issue um, at, at, in the Super Bowl. So for that reason, I think um, I would have to knock out Coinbase as well and advance Google to the finals. So they're, they, they, they make it to the last round and we'll see who they face as we now compare Amazon against Uber Eats. So what would you, what would you say, John, about, about these two? Well, I think I'll just make a point on what I liked less. So Uber Eats, Amazon, they were both funny. They had celebrities in it, caught people's attention. But for me, Uber Eats, some of the moments that were described in that ad made me refoil a little bit because of the graphics. Yeah, well, well, it's interesting because I, I think I've seen, I've, I've seen kind of different reactions to Uber Eats. Uh, we mentioned earlier the Chunky Milk Mint Mobile ad, which was definitely disgusting and had negative amplification. Uh, but I think some people did mention that Uber Eats uh, was, was the kind of commercial that could go viral. You could imagine people um, talking about what they and trying to eat things that they shouldn't be eating and sharing that on social media. That seems uh, just something made for, for, for social media. So, so you could imagine uh, that. Uh, although on the downside, um, I, I did read that there was a tweet from a consumer protection agency right after the Super Bowl uh, advising people to make sure not to eat soap. So uh, that's something to, to keep in mind. Uh, I think, though, overall, you, you really do want to make sure to avoid these negative emotions at, at something like the Super Bowl. So if there is going to be discussed, even from a small uh, portion of the audience, that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, and so for all those reasons, I think uh, Amazon wins the day uh, for me as well. So uh, let's move Amazon up and make it a true tech battle for uh, the tech bowl. It's going to be Google versus Amazon. 
All right, so now we have to pick a winner, and this is where it gets hard because we've got two commercials that obviously have uh, done pretty well in terms of our ad plan tech framework. And, you know, these are companies that have lots of dollars to spend on advertising. So, you know, they're getting uh, the best creative teams and the best uh, agencies uh, to work on their commercials. So how do we how do we choose this year between Google and Amazon? It's so tough because there's they're similar in terms of the scale of the company, but their commercials were vastly different. Um, the only com common thing that they shared was that they had celebrity in it. Amazon, I liked it because they do have this net equity with Alexa as a brand, but, and also they have this net equity of the storyline of the commercials. The past um, previous year's Super Bowl commercials for Amazon, they were all playing on this counterfactuals, what life would have been like had Alexa was not there in 2020, and what if Alexa was Michael B. Jordan in 2021. So they were spinning on this again this year with, oh, what if Alexa could read our minds? Um, with that, I think there is a strong net equity to it, but at the same time, when you think about humor, one thing that makes humor really good is the unpredictability. But I, for me, uh, later on, the humor aspect of Amazon ad got a little bit old and it was predictable. What Google did really well is they identified a problem very clearly upfront in the first few seconds of their commercial. And then they showed how they had a very clear solution to the problem that their competitors didn't have. So that's, you know, clear positioning. And um, I think that was pretty powerful. And especially it being in the area of inclusion, I think that that's, that's something that, that can win the day, uh, you know, especially, uh, especially today. Um, for, for Amazon, what was the problem? If you, if you think about it, uh, they, they, we are all worried about uh, our, our smart devices, you know, stealing our information maybe or some privacy concerns. And it's not like Amazon was solving that problem. They were poking fun at it in, in a way uh, with the mind reading, uh, but they weren't really solving that problem. So, uh, you know, I think I would agree with you. All told, uh, I feel that even though both commercials were, were fabulous and they were great in their own ways, uh, I think this year I would give the slight edge to Google. And so that does it. I think we have come to our conclusion that our first tech bowl, uh, the winner this year was Google. All right. Well, that's uh, that's a wrap on, on this, but we'd like to now open it up to Q&A and, and, you know, try to engage a little bit and understand what you thought uh, were some of the highlights and lowlights from this year's Super Bowl. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, Dr. Isaac and Dr. Hong for being able to participate with us and show us this expert opinion of yours. Before we go to the Q&A session, I would like to offer and propose a poll for everyone and all the participants that are here right now to actually choose your personal favorite ad from the Tech Bowl 2022. And I'm gonna put that poll in up right now in the next few moments, but I would advise that some people may have outdated versions of Zoom and you may not participate in the poll, sadly, because there are different Zoom software applications. And if you have an older version, it won't work. But those that can, please participate. And the question is, what was your favorite ad from the Tech Bowl? And so there are eight choices. And I think Dr. Isaac and Dr. Hong, would you like to share your personal favorite ads from the Tech Bowl? Yeah, uh, I think based on our discussion, we, we certainly liked uh, Google this year. Although I think the uh, the top four that we picked were all very strong in different ways. Uh, so I think, you, you know, as we said at the beginning, it's hard to do everything in the ad plan framework. Uh, but I think those those top four uh, did a lot of things well this year. I agree with Professor Isaac uh, in terms of what my favorite ad is from this year. Not only Google covered the most elements in that app plan, but it also addressed some of the common problems that tech company has by really narrowing down their benefit and their um, product to Google Pixel 6 and its real tone feature, while other tech brands were mainly uh, promoting the brand as a whole. Yeah, I completely understand that. I'm going to end the poll now and see exactly what the results are. Wow, it seems like the favorite right now with 17 and 46% of the 
the polls right now is Amazon. <laughs> I really like that one too. It was a really well performed ad, and it really showed its comedy and humor within it. I think. I'd like to move on some to some questions. And one question that I want to propose to you all is that these are commercials are all big budget, so they have a huge amount of capital to put towards this event of the year. And as someone who wants to build their brand, such as a student or a small business owner, how does this framework help them? Sure, I can take that. So when you think about Super Bowl commercials and the cost of Super Bowl commercials, when you just look at the number of $6.5 million this year for just 30 second ad, that seems like a lot. But when you think about the total number of exposures, so total number of people watching the event, therefore being exposed to that event, the cost per person might not be that high. But of course, the budget can be only afforded by big companies. So as a brand, just starting off, the other platform that you can really rely on is social media and online marketing. It may not give you an instant uh, viewers of 110 million viewers, but it can through word of mouth and with the online content going viral, give you a potential of maximizing the number of exposures as much as possible. But to do that, you would have to follow some guidelines that we address in the ad plan. You may not, you may not be able to cover all of them as with the brand with lower awareness. For instance, you might not be able to play on the net equity factor because there's no brand equity. However, there's a still a lot of room to be made in terms of maximizing amplification. And oftentimes with online content, what I see a lot of advertisers and content creators do, they come up with, they get too, they get too fixated on cre creative contents or funny contents that they lose sight of linking what they're promoting to the humor aspect of it or the funny aspect of of the products, uh, of the advertisements. So hopefully with the ad plan guideline, it'll give you some strategic um, instructions as to what can really stick to consumers and what can really encourage viewers to um, spread and talk more about the content and the commercials that you created. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. I, I think the only thing I'd add is, you know, the reason we really like the ad plan framework is we think it's a strategic framework, right? Like all of us, when we watch the Super Bowl, we may think about what is funny, um, you know, what has great production value, that sort of thing. But uh, it's really important to kind of understand uh, from a strategic level, how, how does what I'm doing fit in with what I'm trying to do as a company? And, and I think that can apply if you're a small business, if you're an entrepreneur, um, it's just, that, that doesn't just apply to large companies. Thank you, that's wonderful. Now to my second question, um, where were there any general themes that stood out in this year's Super Bowl compared to past years? Yeah, I think uh, one thing I, I could start with this. So I think one thing that came through was definitely nostalgia. Um, this is something that, that comes up often, but uh, this year we saw lots of commercials uh, hearkening back to, you know, the Sopranos, uh, uh, various uh, sitcom scrubs. From, from years back, uh, et cetera. And so, so I think um, that it has been a theme for the last few years where, where companies are uh, relying on nostalgia and that's kind of a tried and true thing. So that was something we definitely saw uh, quite a bit uh, this year. Also, I think companies tried to keep it pretty light. We didn't see a lot of references to COVID or to uh, big social issues for, for the most part. And uh, that's, that is different from prior years. I think in the last couple of years, we have seen uh, more serious issues mentioned in the Super Bowl, but I think this year it was about being humorous and keeping things light. Just to add more to that, um, when we just look at the product category in general, definitely the one theme that stood out was the cryptocurrency that we talked about. Um, and it's not surprising because often Super Bowl commercials reflect the current trend in the market and cryptocurrency is indeed the next thing um, or, or most talked about type of currency in the market. And it wasn't just the crypto that really stole the market share of the advertise, Super Bowl advertising, but we also had uh, numerous electric car companies 
and mainly focusing on the nostalgia in their ads to really target certain age group over the other ones, that age group who may not be as tolerant to electric cars, the new category, they may be more skeptical about it. But by playing with the nostalgia, what they know, they're trying to lower the hurdle to enter the uh, new, for them to enter this new product category. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah, I definitely noticed that there were not many themes around COVID and it was trying to be very lighthearted. I definitely saw that. Another question that we had was if, why exactly besides, or how exactly besides Coinbase were different brands winning the Super Bowl on social media this year? Because as a student, I was talking with many other people how Coinbase captured the attendance for attention span of people for 60 seconds and made it a point to actually use the QR code that they put in and go to their different website that they had. But then I think it actually relates to a question um, I, I think that I see here in the Q&A as well. Um, I, I, I think there are a couple of things. So first for Coinbase, uh, it's one thing to get people to, to take the photo, the QR code and go to the site. But what about conversions, right? At the end of the day, are people actually converting? Did they accomplish what their goal was for the campaign in terms of just driving traffic to the website? Uh, or were they actually looking for conversions? So you have to really think about the objective. Um, but then the, uh, the question in the chat is, is also around, um, is this something that can keep working year on year? Or can they keep trying trying this? And I think it's a great question. I think probably not is the answer. I think, um, you know, Reddit, five seconds last year uh, stood out because it was unique and no one else was doing a five second ad. And similarly, the QR approach for Coinbase worked this year, but you can imagine if every commercial in the Super Bowl was a bunch of bouncing QR codes, it wouldn't have the same effect. So it's, it's kind of one of those things that it works the first time, but it's not something you can, uh, you can just keep repeating and going to the well for. And also I would like to add with the Coinbase um, commercial, the bouncing QR code, um, it created buzz instantly during the Super Bowl and right after the Super Bowl. But once that mystery about what the QR code was resolved, no longer people were signing up for their service or their app. And then another going back to your question of which company won the social media, uh, Buzz, it looks like including Coinbase, those who really incentivized customers to uh, use their service and one being FTX, another cryptocurrency um, company. They announced earlier that they, with the retweet of uh, FTX and the, their commercial, um, they will do a random lottery and then give away Bitcoins. So because of that, you will see post buzz with regards to um, certain companies not just on Coinbase, but also on FTX. And I believe Expedia does something uh, promotional giveaway as well. Okay, wonderful. Because we have such limited time and we're actually going a little bit over time, I'm going to pose the last question about, um, because this is tech ball, we didn't actually focus on any other non-tech commercials this year. And so what were, would you like to add something about what were the best or worst non-tech commercials this year? I can talk about, I guess, the worst ones or the ones that I didn't like. Um, it's kind of like an ongoing thing here. I'm being the grumpy one here. Um, but when you think about the Taco Bell advertisement, it was also another advertisement that relied on late reveal. There were students at this clown university breaking out of the university, going out for a late night snack, and that that happened to be Taco Bell. And then with that, like Professor Isaac mentioned, there, this, there is this risk of low linkage. And not only that, there's this risk of low distinction. It can, didn't necessarily have to be Taco Bell. It could be some other food chains that we know. Um, ben, if it's okay, I know we're running out of time, but I would like to try answering a great question that I see in the chat rather than, uh, I, I liked your question, but I think Jen, Jen did a great job answering it. Uh, so there's a question in the chat around the Google ad, which we, we voted as, as or we claimed was the best this year. And the question is, 
Um, I found the Google ad was geared toward the Af African Americans and people of darker complexion. Do you think this might not attract other groups and will it be profitable? And I thought that was a, that's a really interesting question. Um, one thing I, I just would like to say about that is, you know, I think more and more we know that people are buying uh, products and engaging with brands, not just for what they do, uh, but in terms of the values of the brand and whether they agree with the values and the vision of the brand. And so it, it, it may be the case that that product offering may be geared to a particular segment, but that might be something that is uh, attractive to people in other segments, that they like the idea that this company cares about these kinds of issues and is uh, focused on it. So even if it's not specifically for them, it might be very attractive to them. Uh, so, so I thought that was a great question. Wanted to wanted to try to address that one. Hope that's okay, Ben. Oh yes, of course. Thank you, Dr. Isaac. I totally missed that one. Um, I would like to close out by thanking Dr. Isaac and Dr. Hong for this their expert opinion and a wonderful presentation, and also our sponsors, GeekWire and Seattle U, Albert School of Business and Economics of Seattle University, and that is Tech Bowl 2022. Thank you all for coming, and we hope to see you next year. Thank you.